What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. It's a big month of February wrapped up for the Arkansas Razorbacks. We're going to talk about everything that happened, what to look forward to in the month of March. We're going to talk Razorback football, basketball, baseball. We're going to jump on in some recruiting with Danny West. We're going to answer your questions as well. All that and more on Hog Sports Live. All right, once again, we are still offering our big promotion at Hogsports, the biggest one that we've ever done at CBS All Access plus Hogsports.com. Now, CBS All Access is actually going to become Paramount Plus. So what this deal entails, just to bring it up here, you're going to get Hogsports for 50% off. We're running this through March 3rd. It's over at 10.59 p.m. on March 3rd. So just a couple of days left on this deal. We've actually had more people take advantage of this promotion at hogsports.com than any other site in the entire network, any other site. So we're super proud of that, that people have jumped on, seen the value in this offer. So the way it works out, CBS All Access, again, it's going to turn into Paramount Plus, which is going to include all the programming from Paramount, Commercial Free, CBS, uh, Comedy Central, um, Smithsonian, I mean, Nickelodeon for the kids. So a, a ton of, of channels, just another screen, streaming service like Netflix or uh, HBO Max or Disney Plus, one of those things. So it's a $99 annual value for CBS All Access. Normally, hogsports.com is uh, $107, I guess, and 40 cents, but now it's $53.70, half off. Okay, so it's half off at hogsports.com and CBS All Access for absolutely free. It's a $100 value. So it's $207.39 billed at just $53.70. That's $159.69 savings. That's an incredible deal. And the great thing about this is not only do you get the CBS All Access with the discounted Hog Sports, but as long as you're subscribed to Hog Sports, say you're subscribed to Hog Sports for the next seven years, then you get CBS All Access. Again, about to be Paramount Plus on March 4th. It's transitioning over. It's going to increase the library. So you'll have Paramount Plus for every year that you're subscribed for free. Commercial free version. So this is the higher end version. There's two options. This is the higher end version. Also, I believe it allows you to watch uh, live TV on CBS so you can watch the NCAA tournament and all that stuff. So this is a great deal. Super excited. So many have taken advantage of it. If you haven't done so already, you got just a little bit more time to do that. So sign up for hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. There's no promo code or anything. Just go to hogsports. You'll see plenty of uh, links to click on uh, for uh, information on signing up for that. Thank you for listening. Appreciate all the support on here. The main reason we do this show, I mean, we're not making any money really doing this show. We do this show to promote our website. So we appreciate you guys listening and uh, and all of those that have enjoyed the content you hear, you see here and want to see what we have behind the curtains for our VIP subscribers. Again, it entails all of Danny West recruiting information, which we're going to get to that. Uh, all his VIP content regarding that, our editorial stuff, Curtis's deep dives into basketball, Razor's Edge Premium Forum, all, everything you get with the uh, – the most in-depth, complete uh, college football recruiting database, transfer portal, crystal ball features, just a ton of stuff at an amazing price. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thanks for not fast-forwarding through that. I know how you do. I know what you do. I don't think I don't know that. Arkansas made a big jump in the AP Top 25 poll. It has been a hell of a month. I mean, a great start for baseball, and we'll get into that, but basketball goes 7-0 and in the month of February. They've actually only lost in January. They didn't lose any in December. I mean, they have not lost any other games outside of the month of January. That's pretty incredible. If that continues into March, then we're really talking about something special. If it goes into April, then we're talking championships. And we're talking SEC conference tournament championship anyway. But So Arkansas got 346 votes when they were ranked 20th. In the last AP poll, which was just dropped at 11 a.m. Monday, today, if you're listening live, they got 847 votes moved all the way up to number 12 in the AP Top 25 poll. Awesome. Love it. So, Gonzaga is number one, obviously. Michigan, two. Baylor, three. Illinois, four. Iowa, five. West Virginia, six. Ohio State, seven. Alabama, eight, which Alabama beat – which means Arkansas beat Alabama and LSU this week. Houston at 9, Villanova at 10, Florida State at 11, and the Arkansas Razorbacks 19-5. and five. What are they, 11-4 and four in conference now? 19-5, and five, number 12. As Curtis Wilkerson would say, that's good stuff. 
you know, the uh, uh, CBS came out with their uh, top 25 and one. Where did they have Arkansas? They had Arkansas pretty high, too. Let's see. I think they had Arkansas at 11, I want to say. CBS top 25 and one. Now they go reverse order. So Arkansas is 11th in the, in the CBS top 25 and one. SEC power rankings, Arkansas is second. Obviously, they're second in the SEC, sitting on that second seed for the tournament. Right now, they're saying the SEC is the third most intriguing tournament. Alabama is favored, but they just lost to Arkansas. So it's the third most intriguing uh, college basketball tournament on the horizon here. And a lot of that has to do with Arkansas beating Alabama and what could happen. So Arkansas has won nine straight in the SEC. The only blemish during that time is when they stepped out of conference on January 30th and lost to Oklahoma State, barely, on the road. 11-4 and four in league play. Nice comeback over LSU. Get rid of that. Nice comeback over LSU. Down. I mean, I felt like, what were they down? Just five points or something at halftime to LSU? I felt like they were down 20. <laughs> I mean, I felt like they were down 20 points the way things were going. And they just came out and surged. Justin Smith led the way. 19 points, 10 rebounds. His second double-double in a row. J.D. Note came out. We knew Note was had another outburst in him, and they needed him. So Arkansas can make history now with this run. They're not going to lose. They are not going to lose double-digit games. They can't lose double-digit games. They're guaranteed a game in the tournament. they got two more games left. So even if they drop those two, I don't think that's going to happen. They drop the SEC tournament game. They drop an NCAA tournament game. I mean, that's only four more losses. So they, at worst, are going to be 19-9. and nine. If they split these next two games between South Carolina – and the makeup game with Texas A&M, if it's even played, they'll have the best conference record that they have had since 1993-94 when they won the national championship. This is historic in that sense. That's a long time ago now. People are talking about four seed, maybe three seed, depending on how things go. I mean, they're lo- they're in the tournament. There's no questioning that now. They could lose it. Every game coming out, you know, these next three games, they can lose all of them, and they're easily in the tournament. Good place to be. It's a place Arkansas hasn't been in a while. 2014, 15, I guess they were pretty firmly in there. Or is that 13, 14? Portis year when they went. I think they also finished second in the SEC. So that's the, the year that they're kind of competing with right now. It's been 25 years since they made it to the Sweet 16. They got a shot, depending on how matchups are and everything like that. But a chance to make history, 7-0 in the month of February. Good month for Arkansas basketball. You know, one of Curtis's VIP stories that he does, I think is fantastic, is uh, he does player grades. So he, every player that plays in the game, he breaks them down one by one. And, you know, obviously Justin Smith, A-plus, finished it strong. I mean – to me, 19 points, 10 rebounds in 38 minutes, that's an A. But the windmill dunk at the end, A+. plus. Nice finish there. They were even talking about it on the Indiana board, on Peagues. J.D. Note coming out with with 18 points, gets an A from Curtis. Devontae Davis with an A. I'm not going to go through all of them, but he, he does a long explanation, breaks down you know everything that they did. So if you're like a basketball nut, Curtis Wilkerson stuff for you is fantastic. Moses Moody gets an A-. minus. Now, I'm going to talk about Moses for a little bit. 18 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists. Does a lot of things on the floor. He has not been shooting very well, though. He will come out of that, and when he does, if everybody, if everything else is clicking the way it is, then Arkansas could be really dangerous. Like, like he scored in his last three games, 18 points, 24 points, and 14 points against LSU, Alabama, and Florida. Good numbers. Most of that damage is done at the free throw line, though. Against LSU, he was 3 of 14. Against Alabama, he was 3 of 12. This is from the floor, excuse me, not from the free throw line. From the floor, 3 of 14, it's 21.4%. 3 of 12, 25%, and 3 of 14, 21.4%. The last three games. He didn't shoot a whole lot against Missouri and Kentucky, and then the game before that, Mississippi State, was 4 of 12. So in these last three games, Moses Moody is 9 of 40 
from the floor, 22.5%. He is 5 of 17 actually shooting better from beyond the arc, 29.4% from three-point range. The damage is done at the free throw line, 33 of 40, 82.5%. He's a good free throw shooter, and that's and he's getting to the line. I mean, how many times have we seen him get people in the air on the three-point shot lately? So he's doing some good things, and I'm not coming down on Moses uh, because he'll pick it up, you know, he, and he's had some really great games. But that pops out to me, 9 of 40 in the last three, 22.5%. Is that interesting to anybody else? Is anybody else knowing that, noticing that? Anyway, he'll step back up. You know, it's kind of like J.D. Note. J.D. Note went quiet for a while. We know that guy can score. And then he has an 18-point outburst, that deep three to get him going at 1.2 when they weren't making any threes. So, you know, and the same thing I think will happen eventually for Desi Seals, who hasn't played very well at all lately. You know, since his shoulder injury, Desi Seals has been – he just hasn't been good. I mean, I know injuries can really affect you, obviously. But Desi will, Desi will have a game here somewhere where, you know, he, he pops in and, and fills in for you. You know, part of that is, you know, he's not playing as much. And, you know, part of that's probably the shoulder. Part of it's Devo, who has really come on. Curtis has a VIP in-depth breakdown of this upcoming game. Inside the numbers, the history between the two teams, the names to know, the keys to success. I mean, this is a long, long article. And Curtis does one before every basketball game. And then after the basketball games, he does the grades. And this is fantastic content. You know, we always kind of have – a lot of you have probably read our free content. We, we have two ways of doing things. Like if something's in a press conference or if it's something that has already happened or just happened, you know, or maybe breaking news or something that everybody's going to latch on to in the media, we run all that stuff for free. We get a piece of that pie, right? You'll see an advertisement on the page. You get the article you want. We also do stuff for our VIP subscribers, which is more in-depth analysis, more uh, editorial opinion pieces, more projections, insider information. That's where the VIP side of things come into play. And then, of course, our message board, we drop a ton of scoop, ton of information. You're going to like it. I'm glad you're signing up. I'm glad you decided to finally sign up. You've been thinking about it for a while, and you're like, you know what? This is a heck of a deal. I like what Trey's saying right now. I'm going to give it a shot. I mean, it's, what, fifty less than $54 for the entire year. Switching over to baseball real quick, Arkansas is 7-0. and They finished a four-game sweep of SEMO, Southeast Missouri State. Five innings on Sunday, 11-4 win. Almost lost that first game, came back, won an extra innings. A great start for the baseball team. And they, they, I mean, like if anything's out doing what basketball is doing right now, baseball is ranked number one in the country by several outlets. They, I mean, they made a big jump to second after, uh, after going to Arlington and sweeping that. Uh, what are they? Texas Tech, T- TCU and Texas. They got the order out, but um, Texas Tech, Texas, TCU. They were three, nine, and ten in that order ranked. And Arkansas was eighth at that time, so – I mean, and this is by several, you know, a couple of outlets have have bumped Arkansas up to number one. Up next for a baseball team Friday, March 5th against Murray State at 3 o'clock. And they play Murray State Saturday at 2 and then Sunday at 1. These are all in Fayetteville, obviously. Did I mention what's up next for Arkansas basketball? I don't think I did. So uh, March 2nd. I mentioned Curtis's uh, long breakdown of South Carolina. March 2nd on Tuesday, it's an early game, 5.30. It's what you like on the road, though. I guess for East Coast, it's 6.30 for them. So um, they have time to get to the game. But, it's I mean, it's again, it's not like the same kind of capacity. Although, I've, you know, there's been a difference in Fayetteville when they've had an early, early game on a midweek versus, you know, having a, a later game, even with the 4,000 cap. So at South Carolina, 5.30 and – if it happens against Texas A&M on March 6th, I mean, these guys have not played, did not play. So Arkansas is going 7-0 in February. Texas A&M does not play a single game in February. Arkansas slated, slated to play in the makeup game on March 6th. At least they get them Bud Walton Arena instead because they didn't play them. They were scheduled to play them twice, and both games got canceled. One game got canceled, one game got postponed, and one was away and one was home, obviously. So at least they get the home game against Texas A&M if it's even played. Because if it was on the road, Texas A&M would let them know when they're loading the bus, even though they've known the whole damn week that they're not playing the game 
they let him Arkansas. Know, I mean, that's that's kind of crappy. I'm sorry, Texas A&M. It is let people give some people some advance notice. Maybe they can schedule another game. I mean, I get you're just worried about you. You're worried about yourself. All right. I told Danny West I was going to get to him. For those of you who don't follow Danny West, I have once again forgot to update his profile. As you can see, it says at Danny West one on Twitter, but you can follow Danny at Danny West 24 7, 247. Again, a lot of Danny's stuff is going to be VIP recruiting news. So if you like that kind of stuff, then you want to give him a call. Or <laughs> you want to give him a call. Then you want to sign up for Hog Sports. I'm giving him a call. Hello. What's up, Danny? How you doing, man? Good, good. What's going on? Oh, not much. I was just uh, letting everybody know what a great job you're doing covering Razorback recruiting. And I thought that maybe if you got a second, I know you're busy today, um, if you could jump in a little bit about what's going on. You just had a VIP article, so I don't want you to give away the horse, but uh, yeah. that's not the expression. You don't give away the horse. What do you give I've away? I've never given away a horse. Give away the, uh, I don't know, what I whatever know what the expression mean. is. Um, but anyway, there, there's virtual visits just went on. Arkansas made the cut for a lot of different players, a lot of new offers extended, and you have this all broken down in, in one nicely put together uh, Monday recruiting notebook story. What's, what's the latest that you can tell us? Yeah. Yeah. So they had another one of those virtual visits on Saturday. I think that was their fourth since January 24th now. So I wrote about six or seven of those guys again this morning. A couple of big time guys out of Texas. We've seen a couple from uh, Louisiana, Kentucky, Tennessee in this go around. I, I will highlight a couple here. Grant Bingham, a four star offensive lineman out of Kentucky. I think it's notable he's done this twice now. I mean, anytime uh, you and I have said it through the years, if, when we see a kid show up on campus twice, mm. you mark that one down. Oh, yeah. That's always notable. So, uh, you know, without being able to do that, this is about the next best thing you can get. So that's notable. Keep an eye on Grant Bingham, big time four star offensive lineman. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick Kutis, I hope I'm saying that right, defensive tackle out of Memphis. Um, he told me Saturday he really had a great visit. They're making him feel like a priority. He's, he stands out to me because a lot of schools want him on offense. I mean, mm -hmm. you think back to the 21 class, we just saw a guy like that in uh, Cam Ball. You know, so many teams wanted him on offense. Arkansas likes him on defense. So, mm -hmm. Patrick Kutis, I'm going with, mm -hmm. uh, a DT out of Memphis. He's another one to keep an eye on. So, you know, that's a couple there. I, I wrote a, uh, I've written a little bit about Jordan Allen. A cornerback, four-star again. That's the thing about it, Trey. I look back, and I'm currently compiling a, an updated list of, of guys who have conducted these visits, right? Mm -hmm. And it's one after another. It's four-star, four-star. On down the list, it's just, you know, is Arkansas going to get all those guys? Probably not. But it sure makes people feel good to be in the in the ball game with so many of them. And there's a whole bunch that have, have you know, at least shown enough interest to take uh, you know, an hour or two out of their Saturday and do a visit with the Hogs. Danny West joining us from hogsports.com. Again, follow him at Danny West 247 on Twitter and sign up for hogsports.com for all his VIP content. Arkansas also made a, a, a lot of cuts lately. It feels like Curly Thomas is trimming his list from a top 20 to a top 15, and now he's got a top 11, I guess. Uh, but uh, Andrew Chambly, uh, are we saying that right? I, I heard on uh, the recruiting podcast they actually said it a little bit differently. Is that right, Chambly? Man, that's what I'm going with. They said it I've very a lot more time. French. Um, Did they? But Chambly anyway, he, or something? yeah, Chambly, I believe, Chambly. Yeah. But um, I've heard it a couple of different pronunciations. I will uh, ask Andrew, which is funny. He goes by two different first names as well. Some people call him Alex. Really? So, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. He's got Andrew and Alex. So. Well, I'm all kinds of confused on this one now. I hope Trey. he just sticks to one He's because it messes kid. up our database when they go to college and change their name that we had them under it. high school, and it's all the links are all. CJ O'Grady rule, man. Don't ever change your yeah. name midway through your career. Yeah. CJ, I hope you're listening. Well, you can change your name once. Cheyenne, what, I'm sorry, Cheyenne. You can change your name once. Okay, I'll allow that. I'll allow Muhammad Ali to change his name from Cassius Clay if that's what he wants to do. I can't allow you to go back. <laughs> Once you've yeah. done it, then you've, no, you're I'm done. Going back. I'm not going. I'll, I'll do it. I don't. I don't want to do it once. But if you want to do it once, okay. 
but that's it. You can't go back. Yeah. So CJ is Cheyenne. CJ is Cheyenne or Grady. He tried to go back back to CJ, but I, I've just got him under Cheyenne now. Yeah, I think a lot of it depends on how good you are, too. Like, <laughs> like, I mean, if Darren McFadden wanted to yeah. go by Michael all of a sudden, he would have been Michael McFadden, no yeah. problem. Yeah, I guess if Ali wanted to go back to Clay, I, we could call it. We call him Clay. I mean, we'll rest allow in it. Peace, but, um, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Danny, I told you I wouldn't keep you long. I know you got a lot going on today, but um, oh, I've got a couple minutes here. I'm not too big of a rush. But okay. yeah, you mentioned the latest cuts that. Uh, Curly Thomas, we've seen it go from 34 to 20 to Mm -hmm. 15, I think, now 11. Arkansas is still very much involved there, uh, (laughs) along with 10 other schools. Yes. Kayshawn Sapp, offensive lineman, another recent virtual visitor out of Lee County High School. You familiar with Lee County down in Leesburg, George? Yes. Big time uh, powerhouse. Arkansas is on a few of those guys down there with Jimmy mm-hmm. Smith leading the way. And Scott Fountain, of course. And Sam Pittman's ties down there. They're really hammering that school. But he just came out with a top eight. Again, talking about Kayshawn Sapp. Mm-hmm. Uh, big time offensive lineman there. Um, Andrew Chambly. I hope we're saying that right out of Maumel. He's got a top seven put out last week. Arkansas, Auburn, Florida, Michigan State. Ole Miss, Penn State, and Tennessee. That's a pretty solid list there. And then, mm-hmm. of course, I mentioned Jordan Allen, four-star corner out of Lafayette. He's got a top 15. I'll I'll spare you the time on the other 14, but yeah. Arkansas is in the mix there. A lot, a lot, a lot of long lists here, 8, 7, right. 15. Like, I, I look at a top – when I see a top 7 or a top 8, I'm just like, you know you could have cut off a couple yeah, and get a, and round it out to now. a 5, you know. 5, yeah. 10 – I'll, that's kind of like the same thing. I'm not allowing, I'm not allowing this top 15. I don't know if we can do a story on a top 15. <laughs> but if you want to tell me that with the top 10, I'll allow it. I draw a hard line on that one, Trey. Would, yeah, would appreciate a top yeah. five. <laughs> but I get it. I mean, yeah, these more. kids, it's hard to make up your mind. You go back and forth, and you know, no, it's hard. You know, like we we follow these kids um, year after year, and it's important to remember that while we've gone through, you know. A dozen recruiting classes, or eighteen in my cl- my it's case. Their first one. This is their first one, you know. So it's yeah. not, and nobody really. I mean, there's not a great handbook. Maybe you ought to write the handbook. You ought to write the I handbook, Danny, I, about I how to. Somebody else is more talented than me. <laughs> ought to write that. But I will say, you know, I've uh, talked to kids about it in the past, just kind of joking with them. Hey, you gonna cut it to a top fifty? You know, Will mm-hmm. Gregg used to be one of those. I oh, yeah. used to mess with Will, but you know, they bring up a good point. I've heard it a couple times now that. It's not just – they're not always doing it for attention, right? right? A lot of times they've got 50 schools calling them. Right. And, you know, if you've got nine coaches on that staff, I mean, you can do the math pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. And, oh, by the way, you've got three or four of us covering that team. Now we're all calling you too, yeah. trying to see what you think about that team. So a lot of it is just – it's kind of a please stop calling me so much type deal. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, a lot of these kids too, I mean – not all these offers are legitimate, you know, just because yeah. you have an, like we talked before, if Arkansas wants an offensive lineman, if they want to sign one offensive lineman, they're going to offer 10, That's you know, right. and they're going to have an order to that. Yeah. And that doesn't always show up. I mean, uh, as we've said plenty of times, it's even more true now, but uh, you have to offer in this day and age, you have to make an offer to a kid early before you've even had a chance to properly evaluate them. Because if you don't, they'll come out with one of these lists and cut you. I mean, That's they, right. Arkansas hadn't had a chance to like go visit the school and talk to a counselor for all these kids that they've offered that have trimmed their top seven, top eight list here. You know, sure. yeah. So yeah, we'll step out on a limb before I let you go. Mm-hmm. Going to make a call here. Offensive line will be the strength of this year's class. Going to be a good one. That's good to hear. That's where you change things. Yeah. All right, Danny. Appreciate that's you, where brother. It's happening. All right, man. All right. We'll see you. All right, again, that's Danny West. You can follow him at, at Danny West 247. I've got to change this graphic. I keep forgetting. Every time I pop it up, I see it's like, oh, I forgot to do it again. But follow Danny West at 247sports.com. And again, sign up for our big promo, CBS All Access, soon to be Paramount Plus on March 4th. This promo ends on March 3rd. All right. You know, some of the things Danny mentioned there, you know, Grant Bingham uh, out of Kentucky and Arkansas looks like they're in good shape. He's visited twice. I mean, it's not like a in-person visit, but it's it's still notable. You know, usually when you see that, you're just like, this guy right here, that's a guy to keep an eye on. 
four-star offensive lineman out of Kentucky. Patrick Kutas, Kutas, K-U-T-A-S. We don't have an exact pronunciation on him, but he's actually listed as a defensive tackle um, on the composite, but 24-7 sports has him as an offensive tackle, kind of reflecting what Danny said. Illinois, Mississippi State, Oregon, Tennessee, Arkansas, Virginia, several others. Nice offer list. A couple of really nice off, uh, prospects, uh, Andrew Chambly inside the state, or Alex Chambly, or Alex Chambly, or Andrew Chambly. We're not 100% sure. Here's Danny calls everybody by their first name. He always forgets to get a pronunciation because he calls everybody first, by their first name. But um, so there's two really great prospects inside the state. They're in on a ton of guys outside the state. So I think he's probably right on it going to be really strong on the offensive line. And that's where you change things. Like Arkansas has had skill guys. Like you take last year's skill position players and you put them behind an offensive line loaded with four stars – big, huge guys, things look a little bit different. You take Arkansas's defense last year and you bump up that defensive line even better, add some more depth, get a a real pass rusher. Not that Arkansas – I think they're probably going to change things. I think a change with uh, bringing Jamal Ashley in is going to help them get to the the quarterback a little bit more. But, you know, you change some things on the offensive and defensive line, that's always been an area that you've you've kind of – hurt I guess at Arkansas there's just not there's not that many players that are just like six seven 330 pounds that are 17 years old there's just not a lot of guys like that and then even more so on the defensive line there's not a lot of six four 300 pound guys that are fast twitch you know they can they can just explode out of their stance there's not they just the good lord did not make a lot of people like that okay that's why it's so hard to find those defensive linemen and offensive linemen it's just hard to find them now wide receiver Arkansas has got a great wide receiver group. But at the same time, if you look at 24-7 sports recruit rankings, you'll find more four-star wide receivers out there than any other position. It's just more, more prevalent. Now, you get to an elite level, obviously, but you can find a good wide receiver. It's hard to find a good offensive or defensive lineman. I think I said pretty much everything I want to say there. I'm going to flip it over to your questions now. We've gone – about 33 minutes. Before I do that, one more time, everybody, if you haven't signed up, take advantage of this promo. You're going to love it. We're coming up on spring football. There's tons of recruiting stuff going on. March Madness. I mean, you get to stream live CBS here with this service. It's a $99 annual value for CBS All Access, commercial free, slash Paramount Plus, transition to Paramount Plus on March 5th, 4th. Fourth or fifth, I think fourth. But it's absolutely free. 50% off at Hog Sports and free CBS All Access. It's over $200 value for just over 50 bucks. So, we like to think we cover the team better than anybody else when it comes to straight coverage, when it comes to insider information, breaking news. So, get your Razorback coverage from the number one independent insider source on the Hogs and get Paramount Plus for free for as long as you're subscribed. As long as you're subscribed. If you're subscribed with us for 15 years, CBS Viacom is our parent company. So, as long as you're subscribed to Hog Sports, you're going to get this for free. It's $100. It's $100 for free every year. Plus, this year, Hog Sports 50% off. Do it. You know you want to. You know you've been thinking about it. So it's a good time to do it. Spring football on the horizon. All right. Let's get to some questions now. Alex Hamilton says, were the reports of Musk loading this team early on true? And loading this team early on true. And also a lot at the end of the year, do you think Musk will get a contract extension, maybe $4 or $5 million? I'm not sure what you're asking exactly there, Alex, but as far as contract extension, almost typically, I mean typically I would say, and almost certainly he will get a contract extension just based on the trend with college coaches. College coaches usually get an extension and a raise after two years, no matter really what they've done in the two years before. If you remember Brett Bielema, um, I think Arkansas won, went 6-6 six and six in the regular season uh, before they got invited to the Texas Bowl, and he got an extension that year. And a lot of people were like, why? I mean, he hadn't done that much. But that's just 
protocol, that standard. If Chad Morris had been had stayed on another year, people would have been up in arms over this one reason that made a lot of sense to fire him because he would have most likely gotten a contract extension and a raise. That's just how you always try to keep about four years on that coach's contract. So every couple of years you're going to see extension, raise, extension, raise, on and on and on. So Musselman is due for an extension and a raise anyway. So the fact that it's a contract year and he's having the success he's had is going to benefit him. He's going to get a good deal. Arkansas is going to want to keep him. It would be disappointing if they didn't. Carl Malinger says, incredible season for our sports teams. I mean, everybody – like, football gave you some hope, you know. But everybody else, I mean, from women's basketball to softball to soccer to men's baseball – men's baseball, like there's women's – to baseball, men's basketball, I mean, everything. you got 19 sports here at the University of Arkansas, and all of them, it seems like, are doing a fantastic job. In football, there's, you know, they're ticking up. Football takes a little bit more to get going. I mean, there's more players playing football. It's, it takes more time to flip a roster over, um, you know, all of those things. It is more competitive overall, top to bottom. Yes. I mean, ba- baseball in the SEC is extremely competitive, but there's a whole second half of the league that doesn't really care about baseball. You know, they're like not gimme wins, but gimme series is – series is – but football, football's ticking up. Baseball is there. Basketball's there. I mean, basketball can continue to recruit and all that stuff, but they got a good team. And it's good to see because, you know, I felt like going into this season that this had a chance to be the best team that Arkansas's had since a uh, national championship runner-up. And, I mean, so far it feels like that. I mean, they got a shot. The 13-14 team is, is they're, that's what they're competing with, right? Josh Carr says two more wins this week with Big Suey if they play Texas A&M. I mean, you go on the road. I, again, I always say, you know, if, you, if you're there competing with South Carolina at the end, then that's pretty solid. But it would be sweet. I mean, if they went undefeated this year, I guess they would go into the the SEC tournament as a top ten team. Arkansas number one in baseball, says Jacob Klosner, Kloster. Number one in baseball, 12 in men's basketball, 16 women's basketball. Anybody know if the softball team is ranked or not? I believe they are. Josh Carr says next week will be eight-ish. Curtis Wilkerson says good stuff. That's right, Curtis. Curtis, good stuff, Wilkerson. Anthony Lancaster says any way we could work our way into a two or three seed in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I think so. Win the SEC tournament, win these next couple, then I think there's a chance that you're a two seed. It's, I mean, that may sound crazy, but, you know, you like teams that are surging, and Arkansas is surging. If they win the SEC tournament, then, Yeah. There's a chance. Jack Savage says, Trey, talk about Devo and his climb into the starting lineup. Well, I mean, Devo, first of all, he's got that little, you know, 12-foot jumper down. I mean, he's – I think the last couple two games he's opened up scoring column with that, kind of like a little turnaround, a bit of a fade. Um, Devo is so active. I love his energy. He's just a pest. I love a pest. On my side, you know, you don't want to play against that guy, but he's always swatting at a ball. He's got great feet. He's athletic. He can leap. I mean, he's got a lot of potential. He becomes a better shooter than look out. But I think that Devo, no question, has, out of anybody on the team, has exceeded his level of expectation. You might say Moses Moody because Moody is talked about as a lottery pick. And he was probably ranked in the 40s nationally as a recruit. So he's made a pretty big leap. You know, Devo was about like 118 or something nationally. And, I mean, he's making a lot of noise for him. So, he's ma- he, I mean, he hasn't made the jump up to where like Moses is, but like he's made a really big jump. And he, he, he makes, I mean, he makes a lot of plays on defense. He just, he's pesky. You love that about him. Um, I want, it would be interesting to see what KK would be doing right now. I mean, they've needed KK at times. And you'd like to think that he's improving at the rate like Jalen Williams is and Devo is. Like he would be improving at that level, hopefully, into next year anyway. Philip Patterson says, I believe I've seen them at 24, but not certain. You're talking about women's softball. Tuning in from Denver says, Will Allen, welcome. Patrick Graham Frick says, Florida Keys here. I've been to the Keys. I've been to the Keys twice, I think. Not since I was, I mean, that was like in the 90s. 
Will Lennox says, know anything about Nick Smith or Darian Ford? I think a lot of people think maybe a couple teams for Darian Ford, maybe Baylor, Arkansas. Nick Smith, there's been a lot of talk about Kentucky with him. But don't count on Arkansas for either of those. Curtis Wilkerson is going to have some inside information. You can tune in to Hawk Hoops Live on – well, it'll be Wednesday this week because the basketball game is Tuesday. So, Wednesday, Curtis will have uh, the Hawk Hoops Live show and – be sure to tune in for that, and you can ask him those questions. Will Blank says, and what about Isaiah Satania getting a prediction to Texas A&M? I think it's pretty early. I think that it's going to be a battle for him, but um, Arkansas is in the mix. But, yeah, Steve Wiltfong, our national director of recruiting, did crystal ball Satania to Texas A&M, who is, I think, currently the number one ranked player in the state, wide receiver. Coriel Criswell says, although it isn't as sexy as men's football, basketball, and baseball, track and field and women's sports are generally very successful. Also, great time to be a Hawk fan. Yeah, track and field for women's sports and men's sports is is, is top notch. Nothing else to say and has been that way. I mean, they haven't been where they were under John McDonald, but they've been right under that level in men's track. Don't give away the farm, says Greg Tidwell. That's the that's the expression that I'm looking for. Not give away the horse. It's just one horse. We give away a horse, not the whole farm, not all the horses, not the stable. Appreciate that, Greg. Sherry Wood says, question, does a shot that you were fouled on and missed count against your shooting percentage? No, it does not. If so, Moody's field goal is a little skewed. So, no, that doesn't count unless it goes in. If it goes in, then it counts. If it doesn't, then it doesn't count. Alex Hamilton says, I kind of am thinking the same thing. Would love to see that percentage. Jake Jones says, I believe foul shot does not count. Foul call. It doesn't count unless it goes in. Uh, a lot of answers to that. Appreciate everybody chiming in with the answers. John Dexter says, I'm ready for that article about getting Coach Musselman a contract extension. Stephen Welch says, what's up with Desi? I think we kind of went over that. I mean, he had the shoulder injury, plus Devo's emergence, you know, those things all together. He, he hasn't been playing very well, though, and I hope it's just the shoulder. I mean, I hope he gets better from it, obviously, because they're going to need him at some point. And he'll, he'll, there'll be something that happens where he'll – he's always been streaky. He's always been a guy that loses his shot and finds a shot. Last season, he started out like 0-17 from three-point range before he got it going. Devo is a new Patrick Beverly. Yep. Scott Aaron says, hey, everyone stationed here in Honduras. Go Hogs. Great stuff, Trey. Thank you. Appreciate you, Scott. Chase Moore says to me, our weakness in basketball is zone. We really struggle slowing down the nets and getting someone in the middle. Only Devo held it together. Thoughts? I think it's great to be able to pick apart stuff like, you know, <laughs> pick apart stuff and win, you know. Um Devo's a great defender. I mean, he's he's good in any defense. I mean, I'm extremely excited about this team heading into March. I hope they get a good draw. I hope they get a good seed. It could be really fun. I mean, it's been a while. And, hey, it's kind of crazy to think about. Arkansas is playing South Carolina on Tuesday. They were supposed to play South Carolina in the SEC tournament right before everything got canceled last year. Kind of crazy to think. I mean, we're coming up on a year now of everything being shut down, almost a year. I was in Nashville coming up on the SEC tournament last year. I was at a publisher conference in Nashville that kind of coincided with the tournament coming up. It, was just, it, was a, it wasn't a publisher conference. It was just SEC only. And that's when things – and I remember seeing people in masks at the airport just thinking, what are you doing, you know? And here it comes. Everything starts getting shut down. Start with the NBA – trickle down, and then everybody gets sent home, and it's just chaos. Seems like a long time ago. As Eric Musselman said, it seems like four years ago, and it does. All right, everybody, one last crack at it here. If you're not doing anything, go ahead and sign up. You know you're going to want to. you just got a couple more days left on this promotion. Again, it's a value of $207.39, knocked down to just $53.70. Four, which it includes a half-off membership, annual membership to hogsports.com, 50% off for hogsports.com. Okay, that breaks down to just $53.70. 
and CBS All Access, which is going to be Paramount Plus. It'll be rebranded as Paramount Plus on March 4th for absolutely free. That's a $99.99 annual value. The whole package, $207.39, just $53.70. It's a great deal. You get Razorback covers, the best insider Razorback covers from the number one independent source on the Hogs, hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. Sign up today. You'll be glad you did. I promise you will. It's what we get from a lot of people. Hesitant to sign up, finally do, and just like, wow, I had no idea that you guys did all this here. You think you get it for free somewhere else, you're wrong, and we got it all in one place. All right, everybody. I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you for your questions. I want to thank Danny West for joining us, providing a little recruiting insight. And be sure to tune in with Curtis Wilkerson. He'll be with you guys on Wednesday after the Razorbacks play South Carolina. Probably about 11 o'clock, usually about the same time. All right, everybody. Appreciate you joining us. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, and we'll catch you next time.